right, what's up, Collider TV fans? We are here for our Emmy special. We just watched the show. I'm really excited uh, to talk with all you people. We we have a new crew here. Usually, the you know the Collider TV talk is David Griffin, Hush Paul Raver, Sinead DeFries. We have an expanded crew here tonight. We have Dennis Zen. Yeah, I'm happy to finally. I, I haven't been on TV talk in a long, long time. Since like week three, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. of TV talk. You're always welcome, Dennis. Yeah. You know that. Okay. And from uh, After Buzz and Screen Junkies TV fights, we have Roxy Stryer here. Guys, Hi. it's Her the first debut. Time on yeah, I'm welcome. I'm so excited. I thought you would never ask, Josh. Yeah, well, she got smashed in our uh, ballot pool here. Uh, <laughs> Dennis Perry High about. Tide and uh, Roxy got destroyed. No. Uh, and finally, we have Perry Nemiroff here from Collider Nightmares. And She's been on TV Talk a few times. It's very appropriate that I'm here, given that I was on TV Talk for the first time for a certain show that we're going to talk about tonight. Yes. I'm so yes, excited right are. now. A uh, lot to get to. Let's just go around uh, overall thoughts. Dennis, what do you think of the show? I mean, not too many big surprises on, on this one. I mean, yeah. a lot of repeat. I mean, the thing with the Emmys is there's always a lot of repeats. But we did see, uh, what what was the one? Was it Tatiana ben, Maslany? Or? Tatiana Maslany. We had Ben Mendelsohn winning for yeah. Best Supporting Act, Actor in, uh, in Bloodline. Yeah, for Bloodline. That was a surprise. But a lot of the other stuff Especially we kind of Especially since this knew. season he was basically a ghost. Yeah, so... Spoiler, I, <laughs> so... Not too many big surprises, but there's the Emmys always has more categories to run through than something like the Oscars. So yeah. there's kind of less, I guess, fluff in between than than the Oscars. Yeah, like, they don't have there, like there's, the... there's no musical performance or anything like that. Correct. It's mostly just about handing out the awards. Right. Uh, Roxy, thoughts? What do you think? Well, we did get a little John Mayer, so he was kind of the musical performance they did throughout. Get to Mayer a lot yeah. down there. Yeah, I think yeah. that was in his contract. He was like <laughs> at least six solo shots, or I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but honestly, for me, it ran a little long, even though it didn't it did actually feel, yeah. run long. There were some funny moments, which I really appreciated. I thought that uh, in general, not that many surprises. But the people who won, I think for the most part, deserved to win. So. Yeah. Okay. Except for me, who didn't yeah, win, who, who got P you know. Emmy. What'd you think? I thought it was okay. There okay. was a lull in the middle where I did find myself looking at my phone and looking at the uh, Twitter reaction rather than just watching the show. But for the most part, I liked it because we had our little betting pool, so yeah. it was kind of exciting to see how many I got. Three-way tie, by the way. Three oh yeah. I feel like oh, yeah. I should have gotten the tiebreaker. Because Dennis, we would give it to you, but th you could have they googled that. I did not Google. <laughs> Yeah, are you questioning my okay, integrity? Let, let's clear this up for <laughs> okay. fans. Okay, this here's what important. happened. We we uh, we all voted on we uh, chose outstanding certain, only, animated certain program. Categories. We didn't vote. We didn't uh, correct. Tr try and predict them all. We only yeah. We only chose 14, 14 categories. Okay, one of them was animated, best animated, but they didn't announce best animated yeah. on the show. But you happened to pick the right one, even though you didn't know yeah. the answer. But because it wasn't announced, we decided to take that away, and thus, thus uh, no Perry, <laughs> yeah, I Perry, love how Dennis, I and I got knew nine. That too, and you're like, pick an animated one. I'm like, all right, Archer. Yeah, no, you picked Archer too. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Oh man, also, you wouldn't have even won. Even won. So, <laughs> we would have tied. You two would have tied. <laughs> yes. Roxy rounded out the cast with with five uh, correct. We all three of us got nine. Um, Which is close to five. Yes. <laughs> Four minus nine. Uh, Perry, what did you think uh, of... Wait, why did you kind of ask you what <laughs> you, you did. I think Here's the thing for me, is I think the Emmys this year especially, it almost like came on us. There wasn't a lot of buzz around no. it. I honestly think that, that the Emmys should take place right around the Oscars. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we're doing it now in September. You got football on. It kind of takes away from an awards thing. Uh, I think all the awards mm -hmm. for every entertainment you already have the golden globes you have the oscars just throw the emmys near the grammys it'd be the same kind of thing for me because then you have all that award show season buzz everybody's in town as is the whole you know you know pr blitz they don't have to worry about the tv and it would and it would kind of eliminate this whole like oh did season six of this show count for the emmys this year because we don't really know that's just my thought i thought the i thought jimmy kimmel was fantastic yeah i think like, it was a pretty, pretty good usual. host though the opening monologue was pretty good was then great. the opening sketch uh, yeah he talked a lot about oj simpson a lot yes <laughs> which lot I, thought, of I thought was pretty funny yeah his delivery is so perfect even when he says a joke that doesn't land or feels kind of strange to me it's something about the way he says it and i'm like all right yeah like, good enough yeah. I agree with that. And I also think Donald Trump did the best job there. Like, yeah. Donald Trump nailed it. Tonight. Everybody had a Donald Trump joke. Even the bad Donald Trump jokes, they were still out there. There were a lot of really funny people that came up there to the microphone and ate it. They totally <laughs> Ann Coulter'd it at the Rob Lowe roast. Ate it hard. Well, I felt like all the presentation, the material that was written for them wasn't that great compared no. to the opening monologue. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so here's how we're going to break this down. We'll, we'll start with comedy. We'll go supporting actor, supporting actress, actor, actor, and then series. Then we'll go to drama 
uh, and then we'll end out the show with our highs and lows, I guess, of the show, what we thought, uh, that kind of stuff. So let's start with uh, supporting actress in a comedy series um, was uh, Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live. None of us got that. I got None. that. Mm -hmm. Did you know yeah. to Kate McKinnon? Because Are I you lying? No, no. I, 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 I had that one just because I, I watched Saturday Night Live. I, yeah. it, it's a great DVR show where if you don't like a certain sketch, you can just skip over it. And mm -hmm. I feel like she's kind of the standout, standout cast member that Kristen Wiig used to be yeah. on SNL. Do you think that uh, she was, I, I, I don't know if you, we've talked about this before, but do you think she was the standout in Ghostbusters like she is on Saturday Night Live? Uh, not so much in there, just because the I think the vibe of that movie was different. But okay. for Saturday Night Live, like that one sketch about her being abducted by aliens is hilarious. Have you guys seen oh, that, that one? That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I personally, I was voting for Anna Klumsky in Veep because I thought this was sort of a breakout year for her because she really wasn't on on the the staff. You know what I mean? Like she was mm -hmm. sort of playing catch up. She was basically in Nevada the whole time, dealing with Martin Mull's character. Uh, you know, this was almost sort of like. I don't want to say a weak category. I think it was a weak category. Do you think it was yeah, a weak category? Yeah, I, I okay. do think so. What did you? What? Who would you have voted for there? Uh, I said Allison Janney. This was one of those times I was trying not to vote with my heart, and I was mm -hmm. voting with my head. And I feel like she just has a great track record, but clearly I was wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it was a weaker category, not because these women aren't doing a great job, but maybe there just aren't the roles out there this year that I feel like are, wow, that yeah. person really deserves that. That role is so unique and awesome. Uh, it was just okay for me. You know, Transparent's one of those shows too. Uh, you know, uh, Gabby Hoffman got uh, nominated for Transparent as well as Judith Light, AKA Angela from Who's the Boss, her, her greatest role. Um, the That show doesn't make me laugh. Like it's not one of those laugh out loud kind of shows like a Veep, and it's sort of like Orange is the New Black. You know, they it, were always it's a comedy slash drama. Comedy slash drama more so. Where I would almost throw Judith Light. I don't love Gabby Hoffman's character in that show, but I would almost honestly throw Judith Light in Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series and almost kind of give it to her. Maybe not this year because there were so many strong females, but in that category, kind of, you know, those transparent, the transparent kind of show is one of those shows that I don't necessarily think is a comedy, which was kind of the joke at the top with uh, Kimmel, you know, just giving the Emmy to. Jeffrey Tambor yes. because everybody knew that he was going to win. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. I was the only one that picked this. I picked Louis Anderson in Baskets. Mm -hmm. I feel like, am I the only one on the table that watched the show? Yeah, I think so. Really? I, I, I picked Matt Walsh just because I I think Tony Hale won it last year. Yeah. I thought maybe they would, would have given it to another Veep uh, cast member, yeah. but no, I haven't seen. A yeah, I went Tony Hale for that reason. Tony I did. Didn't well. get that you did one. Tony Hale as well. Yeah, I did, and I really thought that I nailed it on this one, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, another swing and a miss there for Rocks. A lot of times they do. No, somebody who wins the year before, they'll win again. But I just think he knocks everything he does out of the park. He's yeah. so talented. But I didn't see Baskets. See, I, I had been talking about Baskets since day one. And he, the show itself is super funny. Zach Galifianakis, uh, for a lot of people, I think almost, not like wore out his welcome in Hollywood, but a lot of the characters he does are the same. Mm -hmm. And the guy that he does in Baskets is not the same Zach Galifianakis. And it is really, really funny. Uh, and Louis Anderson, who plays a female in the thing, a lot of like trans kind of themes in tonight's Emmy thing with Jeffrey Tambor and the girl from uh, Orange, Orange is the New yeah. Black mm -hmm. coming out. But Louis Anderson d plays this mom from Bakersfield and she, he is absolutely fantastic. And, and I voted for him because I, like you said, bet it with your heart. And I bet it with my heart because I thought he by far uh, you know, put in the best performance. So but now do you wish that he didn't win because of the list of 5,000 names he just named <laughs> yeah. during yeah. his speech? It just his was like, was and Bob love. and Joe yeah. and Nancy and Mary, he like, come like, on. He had a pamphlet this long that he was reading and then he flipped it over yeah. and I was like, holy <laughs> geez, this guy wrote everybody. Uh, but yeah, congrats to Louis Anderson because uh, I didn't really do my, my total research, but I think that's his first Emmy. I mean, he's been around for a yeah. long time, but he's never really had a role that would deserve an Emmy. So, okay, let's go to Outstanding Comedy Series. Uh, we all uh, voted Veep. Yeah. So I think that was kind of a no-brainer. If you were to if you were to maybe go for a second place, what do you think got the second amount of votes in that category? Uh, probably either Transparent or Modern Family. I mean, Modern yeah. Family had that run for a while, and then Veep kind of has taken that over. I mean, yeah. that's the thing with the Emmys is, once someone goes on uh, on a run, then they start doing that over and over until right. it, it switches over. 
Uh, I mean, my personal pick would have been Silicon Valley, but I knew there was no way that, yeah. you know, that show. The fact that too, they got nominated was kind of a surprise. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that show's too raunchy for, yeah. for, for the, the general audience. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. If I had been voting with my heart and not just because I wanted to win this pool so badly, I definitely would have picked Sil Silicon Valley. It had no chance, though, especially with uh, with Transparent Modern Family in the mix. Yeah. And and we're not talking about a show that I love, and I know we've talked about Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. So good. It's so good. This season, I thought was a little bit weaker than season one because there was Agreed. no real plot line to the to the season. But she, uh, Ellie Kemper and uh, Titus Meredith, no, that's Burgess, Burgess. Meredith. <laughs> Titus Burgess <laughs> Meredith is from Rocky. Uh, he is absolutely uh, fantastic as Titus on Dramadon. Um, and I thought, but I thought, you know, we all voted Veep because this season was pretty incredible. But there was a there was a thought in the back of my mind that Transparent might take that. Um, simply because what we were kind of talking about with the Jeffrey Tambor and the whole, I don't want to say like voting on basically on, you know, controversy or like something that is in the media, whether it's diversity or trans or whatever. Or groundbreaking in ground any way. Groundbreaking in, in any way. It was kind of showed that they actually went with what would have been the funniest series. So I'm, I was pretty excited about that and that we all voted Veep kind of makes sense. So, yeah, as you know long that. as it wasn't Master of None. Yeah, I knew you. <laughs> all I kept saying, and I, I'm sorry to keep saying it, but I don't understand why the show is nominated. I don't understand why the show gets as much respect as it does. It was just mediocre. I watched it because I had to. I didn't enjoy it. Everybody was talking about it like it should win this year. What are you watching, people? Like, what are you looking at that I'm what not seeing? What are you seeing that we're not seeing? Yeah. Because there were funny moments in the show, and, and you were talking about groundbreaking with Transparent kind of thing. Everybody's talking about this being a groundbreaking show. I think they were talking about more of it as a groundbreaking show because an Indian man was leading a, a show, but really and truly, like, it was pretty good television right it wasn't I, like, I enjoyed the series it yeah. was, for me it was up and down it was like i think at the beginning of the series I, I really liked then the middle part was kind of a little more boring for me and then it started picking up when i actually started to get into the relationship stuff because there was a few episodes in the middle where nothing was really going on yeah yeah. I, I agree about the relationship stuff with him and Noel yeah. and whatever. That was okay for me. But with the other things in this category, to me, that is, trails so far behind. The funniest moment in the series had nothing to do with Aziz Ansari. His, well, first of all, his parents were definitely the highlight of the series. The fact that he got his real parents in the series may have been the most groundbreaking thing and funniest thing about the show, right? Mm -hmm. And the second one was when he was hanging out with his other Indian actor buddy, Anush, who was like with the guy who was lactating. That was like the funniest part of the show and it really had nothing to do with disease, I'm sorry. But if you haven't watched Master Numb, check it out. Let us know what your opinion is on that show. Obviously, or we're don't. somewhere in the middle. <laughs> or don't yell at Roxy. <laughs> especially if you're a Sarah Highland fan, apparently. Uh, okay, let's move on to dramas. Uh, we have... Oh, we're not going to do the lead actor and lead actors oh. actress for a comedy? Didn't we just do that? Uh, we... No, not uh, we did supporting. We didn't do lead, oh, lead actor. actor. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lead actor Good comedy call. series. Uh, who do we got there? Um, well, it was we talked about mm. Jeffrey Tambor was kind of a that's a, shoe in. a given. Shoe in. I didn't yeah. vote for him, Both but he was a shoe in. in. What you, well, Julie Louis Dreyfus is a force of nature. She mm. can't be stopped. But I think in the in the mail, you know, with Jeffrey Tambor, I wanted somebody else. I I mean, I, I, I would voted for him because I thought he was going to win. Um, I wanted I wanted Will Forte from Last Man on Earth because nobody watches that show and I think it is absolutely fantastic. Do you watch Last Man on Earth? No, I've seen it, but I, I honestly sometimes I get behind on things and Shameless yeah. is one that I just binge, so I'm all okay. about that right now. And yeah. I know you were on me about watching that, and I think that William deserved this Emmy absolutely he had, snubbed. He, he did have a pretty crazy season, but again, another show that isn't exactly laugh out loud funny, but he is the funniest part well, of that, the show. Then that show falls under that comedy drama. Correct. It's forty two minutes right yeah yeah, yeah any yeah. any of those shows that are actually in well, 55 yeah whatever time. whatever yeah. close to an hour, hour that indicates it's actually a comedy drama Correct. not a full comedy mm -hmm. but i mean we all knew going in tambor uh was going to win this it was kind of a, a runaway thomas middle ditch uh, a shock of a nomination but a super funny actor he he's is. fantastic in silicon valley i, I wish tj miller would have got a best supporting nomination. i'm, su I'm surprised he's he hilarious didn't. on that show he is they're all great I but i'm surprised tj miller didn't get <laughs> more attention <laughs> he's the anchor to that friggin show he's really good uh but julie uh, we go on to actress in comedy series julie louis dreyfus again almost kind of a weak uh 
because you're not watching Grace and Frankie. Lily Tomlin is... You're the only person I know that watches Grace and Frankie. I am the only person that I know. I'm the only person in the world that watches this show. But <laughs> seriously, this show is on Netflix. It is so freaking good. Jane Fonda is amazing in it, too. Lily Tomlin is so Why would Jane funny. Fonda not get nominated and Lily Tomlin would? Because Can you explain L- that? Lily Tomlin's a lot funnier. Okay. So for that reason. Um, but she, I don't know, Jane Fonda, she's just kind of got like a stick up her butt and Lily Tomlin's free and hippie and like on peyote and stuff. Uh. So she's really cool. Is that how you say that? Peyote? peyote? Yeah, yeah, peyote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's really cool oh, in the show. don't act like you don't know well, how to peyote. <laughs> all of a sudden I, I thought it was maybe coyote, but then I was like, what's that? That's a coyote. I don't know what's yeah. happening, but that's actually her son's name in the show. It got confusing in my brain. But that <laughs> She is named her son <laughs> Coyote? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's true. Yeah. That show is amazing and Lily Tomlin deserved that Emmy and nobody watches that show and that's why she didn't get it well i but see here's the thing is nobody watches baskets and louis anderson still got it well i can't answer why <laughs> i don't have the answer she's for defending everything Josh. lily tomlin but she has no <laughs> idea you listen you I, I didn't know that you watched this and i didn't know that it was this good according to you and i trust your tv opinion over a lot of people uh so i'm gonna have to watch grace and frankie i guess it exists and now you know yeah all right well another binge added on the list we got Last Kingdom, Vikings, I still got to get through all those. Okay, uh, let's move on to drama. Now we've got Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Obviously, we got the friggin' Maggie Smith again. Yeah, that was, I don't know. I what? just, I felt like if they had, they had three Game of Thrones actresses, and Give I felt like one. they didn't even have, and I felt like they didn't have Sophie Turner, Correct. who, who should have mm-hmm. been the one. I think Lena Headey and and uh, Sophie Turner should have been the two representing Game of Thrones. Yeah. Nothing against Amelia Clark and, and Maisie Williams. I think they're both great, but I think those two were the ones that had their standout performances yeah. this year, and they didn't nominate her. And then I think they kind of end up splitting the vote, you know, with yeah. those three up there. And then it, it, it went to Maggie Smith. You again. might be right. I mean, Sophie like, Turner in particular though, this season, like she carried so much. Oh, the season and so, and, well, so many things that then yeah. come together. I mean, she is the payoff of the season of Game yes. of Thrones. It's crazy that she didn't get nominated and it's kind of crazy to me that she didn't win. Right. And okay. So you got oysters, clams and cockles, which was, you know, Maisie Williams and Amelia <laughs> Clark, who just, <laughs> Oysters, clams, and cockles. <laughs> like, that's... The, I, 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 I was like... Yes. Great yes. yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, what her, show is that? Okay. Oysters, clams, and cockles. Her dress looked like oysters, clams, yeah, and cockles. Yeah, her <laughs> eye makeup was oysters, clams, and cockles. Oh, come on, girlfriend. Um, Amelia Clark, I felt like the whole this whole season, obviously the dragons mm. and stuff, but most of her shots were her just standing with wind blowing her hair. Like, mm. she didn't really have that many dramatic scenes where I was like, wow, she's just putting... Besides walking out of the tent on fire, which we've already seen before, and she said she wasn't going to come out naked again, which is maybe why they threw a, a nomination. But right. again, like you said, I think that split the vote, and then they just gave it to Maggie Smith, which was amazing that Jimmy Kimmel came back out. And she's like, no, 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 you don't get this again. Because like we said, she's come to the Golden Globes, but she's never come to the Emmys. Make the trip over, Maggie Smith. We'll treat you nice. We've got In-N-Out burgers here. It's fantastic. It's low-key really rude not to come. Yeah. Like, I understand that you're not here, but if you're going to get nominated and there's a very good chance you're going to win, you really should try to show right. up. She's won three now? Yeah. It, if I got nominated for a BAFTA, I'd be over there kicking it, smashing drinks with some British dudes. Eating for fish sure. and chips. Eating fish and chips. What if yeah. she's working? Maybe she is, but I don't I even don't think she deserved to win. I definitely think it deserved to be Lena. Are you kidding me? Did you guys watch this? season yeah after seeing me before you i don't know if amelia is actually a good actress she just looks really good (laughs) on a dragon like she kills it on a dragon but i don't really know and then Maisie is great but i i agree that i think sophie turner deserved the nomination i think lena deserved the win having terrible flashbacks of that movie now (laughs) yeah she was good in that movie for what that movie was but she is really annoying you know that's that's the point of the character i guess about uh, a girl that's actually here with us tonight constance zimmer not winning (laughs) for unreal Let's cut to Perry's camera. And I there I she was is. never hey, Constance, you are looking I was fantastic. never able to get behind this, but there is this one picture that I'm tagged in now on Instagram. And I you know how when you see a picture on Instagram, you look at the picture before you look at the caption. Yeah. And when I when I clicked over to it, I'm like, that's me. You're no. like, when did I take that picture? Wait with Ming Na. I've never been <laughs> in a picture with her before. Regardless, I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, tough one. Really All right, hard. let's go to a supporting actor in a drama series. Ben Mendelsohn, Bloodline. Again, uh, one that I didn't think he would win, you know, because he was so fantastic in season one. But this is for season two, where, again, he was basically a ghost uh, because he's, spoiler alert, I mean, if you guys haven't watched Bloodline, we're already in season two, so. Oh, it's almost it. like they retroactively gave him one for last season. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, here you go. Or bad. 
Yeah. I can't wait to see you in Rogue One. You know? <laughs> I feel like that happens sometimes. Oh, yeah. It happens with like, the Oscars. It happens with the Emmys as well. Yeah. yeah. Oopsies. <laughs> our, our bad. Here you go. Our apologies. Yeah. Sometimes that does. I mean, you look at this list. I mean, really? He would have been the absolute dead last pick. I mean, you have that Jonathan Banks for Better Call Saul. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Um, Peter you, Dinklage, you John Voight. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, hopefully next year, uh, Wagner Moore will get for uh, Narco season two mm. uh, because he's absolutely fantastic. I will say this, of all the shows that where there is a ton of cigarette smoking, Ben Mendelsohn is the best <laughs> cigarette smoking dude on TV. So you that's Mad why Men. you won. Yes, you Round had Mad Men, you had uh, Narcos, you had Peaky Blinders. I mean, all these guys smoke so many cigarettes. Ben Mendelsohn, you smoke a Marlboro Red like nobody I've ever seen. Uh, I, I personally, I wanted Peter Dinklage to win because mm -hmm. of that last scene of the final episode of Game of Thrones when mm -hmm. he gets the pin. And he, I mean, that is an amazing scene. And Dinklage, basically, his whole plot line of all of last season was sitting in that temple talking to Grey Worm and what's the I, I'm gonna get killed Nasande Nasande like talking about Patrol and yeah. he has no <laughs> friends and he's just sitting there waiting for Khaleesi to come back and he carried those scenes he was funny yeah. as always so I, I honestly think as far as supporting supporting mm -hmm. a show Peter I feel like because it. he had less screen time this season than he usually does because they fo they shifted focus because if you actually count uh, they counted up the actual screen time for all the characters and Peter Dinklage has the most okay. but this last season they definitely shifted to like Jon Snow mm -hmm. and and uh, Amelia Clark or uh, Daenerys like yeah. those two characters more so I yeah. had Peter Dinklage also but I will give Kit Harrington some serious credit because I feel like every single season I always think of him as you know not the standout actor mm -hmm. amongst the ensemble this season in particular though he was pretty damn good, and not yeah. just because he's the centerpiece of Battle of the Bastards. Where? Where was he so good? Because I'm I'm I, missing this one. Ooh, I thought he was... Ooh, shots I mean, I, no, I like him, but I'm not seeing, like, wow, that performance was crazy. Nobody else I could have been cast in I thought his performance in the Battle of the Bastards, when he's getting swamped by people, the look on his face of absolute sheer terror that he's going to die, I think earned him as supporting actor. Right? He had a couple of good scenes, though, where he's... You know how, like, the whole season, they're all trying to... Like, with him and Sophie Turner, everyone's trying to kind of piece together the army the way that they know best. I thought he had some really good scenes where he's playing off the other actors and showing what Jon Snow's skills were as opposed to the others. Yeah. And it, Okay, maybe not an Emmy Award winning performance this season, but there is no denying that this season in particular was above and beyond the past seasons for him. Yeah, yeah. but that shouldn't get you an Emmy win. You it know? shouldn't get you an Emmy win. I want to give him some credit for doing, for giving better performances, and I still think he was pretty damn good in the entire season. I, I think so too. I think he's good. I just think that that role is not an Emmy worthy role. Okay, Dan. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's a question of the performance versus what what they're giving him to do. Jon Snow's character really, compared to some of the other characters, doesn't have that big arc. You know, like mm -hmm. Sophie Turner, her character went from this you know girl waiting for the White Knight to come to now taking on like basically she wants to be like the next Peter Baelish. That's what yeah. she wants to be. So. She has that nice story character arc for her. Jon Snow, yeah, it's not. He's still kind of very similar to what he was in season one. Okay, all right, all right. Let's move on to uh, sub, or lead actress in a drama. <laughs> which, I mean, this is. <laughs> Okay, hand it over to uh, to, to Perry. Over there. I'm, so she can... I'm so excited. I have been rooting for her to win an Emmy since day one of this and show. And you and I are the only ones on here that watch uh, oh my. in Black. Uh, I will say my girlfriend is here tonight. She's watching. We fell in love with this show. Uh, we binged it all immediately. I mean, it, it, it is an addicting show. And she... I mean, she plays up, like, what is she now, like 16 clones that she's played throughout the show? She's played a lot of characters and on this show. And you don't, and you forget, you forget that she is all those clones. You're like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. there she is. But she's supposed, oh wait, it's uh, she's the same person. And it's, even if you're not just looking at the amount of clones she's played, if you just look at the main four, them in particular, it, I mean, it is really easy to forget that she plays all four of those characters. They are such drastically different people. And she is just so good in every single role. And she's brought it every single season. It's not like, oh, it gets better from episode to episode. She is on point every episode, every season, and has just taken that show above and beyond. It is about time she won. I would have been so upset if that show wrapped up and she never got an Emmy. 100% agree that I, I honestly don't think, as I look at the I mean, Rob, we all thought you got, uh, Roxy, you thought Robin Wright might win. Is that who you picked? No, I 
I didn't pick her. You picked Robin I did. Wright, I believe. I, did. I okay. picked Tatiana. That's, that's a perfect I got the example. Point. Those are one of my heart. points that I had. Which is why I'm so devastated for you because if you had gone with your heart, <laughs> you I would be the winner. Won. I do, I do so kind of feel like a jerk for not doing it. What are you talking about? Yeah, but that's the thing is when you do these like pools, you want you, you can't you like it's like sports betting. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta bet with your mind, not with your heart. You didn't tell me that beforehand. Yeah, just saying. Yeah, it. I mean, I, I love Tatiana Maslany. I met her and totally geeked out at Comic Con. I'm so uh, jealous. Like I, I, she and she's very small in person, and I like gave her this like big bear, <laughs> like burly bear hug, and I was like, I'm a big fan. Just you know, I'm not a creep. I actually work here. And she was like, oh, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm so happy because what, what pants were you wearing when you met her? They were the ones with like the co- like the hot dogs and the popcorn oh, okay. and everything on them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that were, says not creepy at all. Not creepy. Mm. They were my Thursday pants. <laughs> Uh, and she, but she crushes. So if you guys are out there and you don't watch Orphan Black, go watch Orphan Black. You can you get it on Amazon Prime. Uh, is streaming. You're up to season four now, I believe, right? Or mm-hmm. we, yeah, season four. Season and season four five is going to be the last. Yep. In the last season. That'll be it. Uh, and it's she's just so so good. All right, lead actor in a drama series. I mean, Mr. Robot is the the sensation sweeping the nation. It is the Beatles of this last couple years television on USA and Rami Malek who plays Elliot Alderson I think deserved the Emmy I mean he's absolutely fantastic he basically plays like three different versions of himself schizophrenic Uh, he's a madman he's a sociopath and he's also somewhat like so lovingly dying inside that you can't help but root for this maniac and and Elliot I mean and Rami Malek does an unbelievably good job at it kind of I mean Rami Malek's been around for a little while but this is I mean this is his break yeah he's always been kind of like a supporting role in movies and television because those eyeballs Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like so he plays like some sort of creepy guy yeah and then this is the first time he's gotten a lead role like this but I didn't vote for not vote I didn't pick him because the same reason I didn't pick Tatiana Maslani, it was just because I felt like those two shows, Mr. Robot and Orphan Black, just aren't seen by a ton of people. Maybe this is the year where where some of that buzz has gotten people out to actually watch these shows. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Rocks. there's a single person on here who could have won, and we would have said, oh, that person doesn't deserve that. Yeah. This was an amazing category. Crazy strong category. Uh, yeah. And I wanted Liev because I think he's incredible, but I don't root against Rami. Mm-hmm. He's so talented, and all of these guys... And this was... This was Leah was nominated for last season of Ray Donovan, which I think was, and we talked about it, was his best season. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. What happens at the end of that season? Just yeah. you, you see so much range from him that we've never seen before, and I think he is brilliant. But so is Rami. That's yeah. why this is so mm-hmm. hard. And uh, I think it was Jeffrey Tambor who said, "Listen, there is no best actor. Yeah. That's that's well not said. the way it goes." So yeah. I I agree with that wholeheartedly. And on Ray Donovan, I think we're the only, do you guys do you watch Ray Donovan? I've seen no. a couple episodes. And so. Uh, Ray Don and, and Leah Schreiber plays this, uh, excuse my language, just this unlikable asshole, but you can't help but root for him. You love him. You love him. You love him. And, and, I, I, and he, he doesn't get enough credit because Ray Donovan just isn't that watched of a show, uh, unfortunately. But all, again, Bob Odenkirk and Better Call Saul, Kyle Chandler, who you had said, like, ah, I got a little dark horse here in yeah, Kyle yeah, Chandler. Yeah. Like, all right, no take way. it easy over there. No, I picked Rami and I wanted him to win. Yeah. It's about time because I've been following his career. I've seen a whole bunch of movies he's in where he's the supporting character that everybody forgets about. Like the one that comes to mind is Short Term 12. Have you guys ever seen that with Brie Larson? No. Wait, he, I he's Netflix a small too. role in that, but it's a role that really makes an impression. So I'm so happy to see him get some recognition, especially because of Mr. Robot. Yeah. That whole idea and that concept would have collapsed See, like hardcore if he was not as good as he was. Agreed. Yeah, and we all and have a little bit of Elliot in us, so yeah. we can all appreciate No, we don't. Said that. No, we like, don't. God, please, no. <laughs> and not to sell Matthew B. Short, but The Americans is an unbelievable, unbelievably good show, and he's fantastic, deserves that nomination. A plus. A plus. Okay, let's go in. Uh, finally, uh, outstanding drama series. We all picked Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones deserved <laughs> to win. Uh, congratulations to that whole team because that show this season is, I mean, it's going to win until it goes off air. You would imagine, right? Well, I mean, if they keep up the quality. I mean, yeah. this season was a culmination of a lot of storylines that they had started from the beginning. And then we we also, we didn't, like, vote on this one, but the, the director for Battle of the Bastards, like, we're like, Miguel's if he Carson. doesn't win... Then, then, then what? It, what? Who else is gonna win? Yeah, you and Benioff and Weiss won for writing. Yeah, I mean, this, this show, you know, yeah, swept Game it of up. Thrones. Do we it, know what's gonna happen next year? Are they eligible or not? Because of the later date. Uh, I, think if, I don't know. They might not be. That's gonna not. be yeah, real interesting. It might, it might go to the cutoff date. Because so, like mm. this Emmys, 
Stranger Things was not eligible because it came right. after. And then also, uh, what was I going to say? Narco was season a, oh, two. The Night of. Night of. Right. Night Correct. of next year will definitely be a strong uh, contender in the limited series, limited which series. we didn't talk about. OJ Simpson cleaned I up. I was going to say, I was going to say before we yeah. move on, uh, congratulations to everybody at OJ because uh, the uh, the actor who played, um, sorry, uh, Sterling Brown. Sterling Hello. K. Brown as Christopher Darden was incredible. Yeah. And Courtney B. Vance as Johnny Cochran. And Sarah, Sarah Paul, Paul, Paulson Paul. as Marsha Clark. And she was my favorite speech. Me too. By far. Uh, she gave a special thanks to Marsha Clark, who was her plus one. Yeah. You know, that is super cool. And, the, and, and how eloquent she said, like, thank you. I'm sorry that I judged you. Like, everybody else in the show judged you. Everybody else in the world judged you. It was a really cool speech. And Jimmy Kimmel had a nice joke about uh, this is the first time Marsha Clark wanted OJ to win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. He also had a nice juice joke. Juice? Juice. juice. Yeah. To juice. David it's Schwimmer, juice. juice. Roxy uh, thought was saying juice. Because David Schwimmer is Jewish. I thought he just kept saying Jews, Jews, <laughs> Jews. I was like, hey, that's my tribe. Okay, let's get some recognition here. Jews, Jews, you know. Schwimmer crushing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, O.J. Simpson, as we thought it would, absolutely cleaned up and uh, much deserved. Let's go just real quick back to the Outstanding Drama Series. Um, if you were going to say would be a close second, who would you throw in there? I, I might, I would probably throw Mr. Robot in second and... Better Call Saul in third? Because uh, I haven't watched Mr. Robot, I would say Better Call Saul. Okay. That that show has, has surprised me because I thought a spinoff with, with yeah. that character as the yeah. lead, like, I just don't see it. I thought it was going to be a straight-up comedy, but they actually bring a lot of drama the, to the series. The only thing that I didn't like about that series so far this season was the last five minutes of the finale. I thought it just ended weak. And uh, but the the whole thing, like you said, nobody thought that a spinoff would be as good as it is, and it's fantastic. I watch all of these shows except for Downton Abbey, so forgive me if mm. that should be second well, you're because fine, I don't pick you wouldn't it. Show for the awards, so that's could, true. They wouldn't be there to pick it up. Mine would be The Americans, yeah. without a doubt. Okay. I think that that show is so strong, and as much as I did like Mr. Robot this season, uh, I mean, I and last season, you know what? And we talked I don't about think it, it before. Is that The Americans did something that a lot of shows never do, and that is. Uh, write a teenage girl well. Yes, absolutely. Because the girl is fantastic. The, absolutely. The daughter. And I, I think Mr. Robot is more about the twists as opposed to Americans where there are a lot of twists, but it's about the quality of the show. Yeah. So I, and I the think quality of life and like what it would be like to be a Russian spy in America with, a, with an actual family. And having us still root for them. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Well, uh, I mean, uh, that's it. Basically, we talked about all our things. Let's go uh, start like highs and lows of the show. What do you think was maybe your favorite part? What do you think was a weaker part? Dennis, we'll start um, with you. I mean, highlight of my, the, ep, or the show was when Matt Damon showed up to crash Jimmy Kimmel and may, basically make, because they have this like fake rivalry yeah. on, on the show where, yeah. where he's like always gets kicked off and booted from the Jimmy Kimmel show. Mm -hmm. So it was funny to see him kind of give Jimmy Kimmel a ribbing for not winning uh, best, uh, yeah. What was it? Best reality? Uh, yeah, the it, John Oliver won it. Which hosted congrats, reality. Yeah, hosted reality. Congratulations, which, which, to John which he Oliver. deserved. Oh, for, last for week that tonight one. is is a vision. It took us because you know we missed the Daily Show. I think that Trevor Noah's doing an okay job, but I think there's been some struggle as as you know the the handing of the torch has not gone as well as they wanted. And and John Oliver on last week. He, is yeah, murderous. he's it's it's the new Daily Show. And really then is. um, it wasn't the best speech, but I did enjoy when Alan Yang went up there for a Master of None, just yeah. talking about like. Uh, Asian Americans in the public eye uh, yeah. and then for down I don't know I'm trying to think of what the worst part was I didn't there was nothing that that I don't know I thought was terrible in in, okay. in the in the show yeah uh, Roxy uh, I really liked um, Claire Danes's tan uh, <laughs> that was a high for me a, uh, a little shout out to John Campia real quick who said uh, orange is the new white yeah uh, which uh, Claire Danes cool as somebody that's seen a woman with a spray tan before she's taken a shower, mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend Claire Danes going to a new spray tanner. I appreciated Sarah Highland rushing over after her yoga class. I thought that was really commendable <laughs> also, so definite high. Uh, no, those were my lows. Really bad yeah. moments, women. Come on. Uh, but uh, there were some great ones. I love Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who still was like holding the paper, shaking and crying. Really, your dad and, died on Friday. Right, and I just think she's so gracious and yeah. beautiful and wonderful, so I loved that. Um, I loved when Jim Jimmy thanked uh, all of the white people for their bravery because we really need that kind of support. Uh, and that meant a lot to the white people. Uh, so, yeah, there were some really great moments. I liked the karaoke in the car. That's yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. And I've been loving that. Yeah. Those are some of my highs. 
pay Nemi. So my computer died, and I'm going to be sad when I forget certain things that I had written down. You want to steal mine? I have some random thoughts. <laughs> Did you write down my highs? Well, I know you, I know what one, one of your highs are. Yeah, I mean, obviously, probably the highest high I could have possibly had tonight was to see Tatiana Maslany take that award. Yeah. I, I stood up when they announced it, and yeah. it takes a lot during these shows, especially towards the tail end when I'm like, all right, all right, you know, wrap it up already, and I just... Got up out of my seat. I cheered. I was so happy for her. And then I like the Stranger Things stuff. Yeah, with I, the peanut butter sandwiches. I, I like that. And uh, they were also doing some pre-show hype. And they, they did it. Now, I, uh, Uptown Beat, they yeah. did for the crowd there. So I was busy watching that. And I liked that quite a bit. I also was really happy for Kate McKinnon. And I thought yeah. she gave like a really nice, passionate speech. So I was rooting for her. And with Lowe's. I mean, I, I guess I'm gonna, I'm with you. The, the spray tan was probably the only low just because yeah. there was nothing. Yeah, I mean, even with the jokes, I mean, a couple of the presenters you fell could, You could tell, flat. and I think, honestly, you could tell she knew what she looked like, and she was pissed. <laughs> like, she, you, she should I mean, be. Listen, Claire Danes has never played she anything funny like ever. She looked like my jacket. Yeah, this darker is, than I, jacket. And she's so gorgeous. Danes. She's so beautiful. She's, she's so. gorgeous, and but she's never played a funny role. She's always, I mean, I mean, every thing, every time she's on camera in Homeland, she's one inch away from crying. She takes she's herself very seriously. Very, very seriously. So the fact that she showed up at the Emmys looking like that, you know she's pissed. And you know that somebody's like, <laughs> people are talking about it. She looked ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Absurd. Um, I think high for me uh, was was Larry David coming out. Oh, I don't know. that was a good one. I miss Larry David. I can't wait for uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm season two. Or season, season nine, yeah. season two, season nine to come out. I'm I'm really really excited for that. Uh, I think Louis Anderson's shoes, the sparkle shoes, they were fantastic. It took him a while to get up to the stage because he's a bigger dude, but man, those shoes are fantastic. Uh, again, Julia Louis Dreyfus' speech was probably the best speech. Matt Damon crushed it. Uh, something about um, Louis thanking the PR reps. You don't re like if you if you, if you caught that because he thanked everybody, mm -hmm. but you guys don't realize that a lot of the PR reps what they do to get these people nominated and to actually win is they really campaign yeah. and hustle and hustle those shows so but i think the high for me was definitely uh sarah polson's speech to marcia clark I yeah think that was a very human moment and uh, i thought it was really well done yeah so i agree with that one yeah. uh also bill cosby yeah crushed it tonight you know <laughs> i guess that would be the was my a, low was when <laughs> when, when I think I don't know if it was Jimmy Kimmel's idea or the writer's idea to have him them fake announce that Bill Cosby was going to come out, yeah. and and there, a bunch of the people were like shocked and started standing like, what the hell? Yeah. And then Jimmy Kimmel comes out and says, oh, that was a joke. And I was like, ooh, that's yeah, not that's that burned. funny. Yeah, yeah, that was crickets during that too, crickets. which made it even more awkward. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the other thing that was really awkward was the stuff going on in the bottom left hand side of the screen. I don't know if anybody else was as Drug weirded be out. In thirteen minutes. Yep. Yeah, if nice. more so than that, tweet with hashtag Emmys to get, to get what? They just ended with like, to get. Like to get. Like what is what is the lingo there? That I, am I just not hip enough? Like what does that You're mean definitely to not get? Hip enough. Like to yeah. get what? I did like the set, the production design. Okay. I thought it was yeah, really, it, it looked was really, really effective pretty. and it really looked nice when they changed the category. Yeah. So kudos to whoever did that. I'm In Memoriam you. was nice. Yeah, the, you know. Whoever was singing, I, that was like a beautiful rendition of that song. Of Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 And then also, you know. They, Jimmy they, Smith's and Dennis Franz coming out together. So it just it tugs at the heartstring. I was an NYPD Blue fan at like 10. I think that's why I don't like procedurals anymore because nothing will ever amount to NYPD Blue. They had a couple like, besides the In Memoriam stuff, they had uh, kind of a little tribute to Gary Shandling and they had yeah. a little tribute to Gary Marshall as well. Yeah, Gary yeah. Shandling. I thought those were really well yeah. done. Yeah, We lost and, a lot of people this year and they did a great job with that. Absolutely. And uh, I, again, I think, I hope that, that Tatiana Maslany's win uh, helps more people watch Orphan Black. Oh yeah. And congrats to all the winners. It was a really, really well done show. Uh, a lot of fun. So I guess until next year, when the Emmys come back around, maybe they'll take my advice and put it around the Oscars. Uh, before we go, Dennis, where can the good people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero, on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And usually you can find me on Movie Talk on Fridays and on Mailbag on Saturdays, but I'm actually going on vacation for two weeks. Whoa, so dang. I will see you guys, uh, yeah, in two weeks. Are you going to come back with a better tan than Clara Danes? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too.
Wow, that Roxy was my funniest jo- I've never been that funny. That just like came out of nowhere. I'm pretty proud. Uh, guys, you can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer over on Screen Junkies, Tuesdays, 4 p.m. for TV fights. This guy was just on. He did almost really well. <laughs> yeah, that's a burn. Thanks, Roxy. <laughs> no, you really right. did a great job. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, you always P- do. P. Nemiroff, Perry. <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff on Collider Nightmares every Tuesday, best of the week every Saturday. And if you haven't watched it already, there's a special video in this week's best of the week. Go check it out. And I'm Josh McCuga. You guys can find me at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram every Monday here on Collider doing TV talk. We're going to talk some more about the Emmys. You'll get David Griffin, Sasha Paul Raver, and Sinead DeFries, who's actually there on the red carpet doing some interviews, some stories and their, their thoughts in the Emmys. Uh, you guys can see my show, The Josh McCuga Show, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I want to thank all the crew for spending a Sunday night. I know you guys didn't have to do this, and I appreciate it. It's coming to talk the Emmys. Uh, Roxy, welcome to Collider. Thank you for uh, making your debut here on our Emmy show, and you're welcome back anytime. Thanks for having me, guys. guys. If you are just clicking on because you saw an Emmy thing and you haven't ever seen any of the other shows, check out Nightmares, Heroes, Movie Talk, uh, Jedi Council, and the Schmodowns and the Schmoes No Live show. Thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, (laughs) click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.